Hi, I'm Tim, the Woodworking Maniac, and today we're going to make a cutting board. It's an end grain cutting board that looks a little bit like a brick pattern. I made it out of cherry, maple, and walnut, and I think it came out looking pretty neat. Follow along and I'll show you how I made it. With all of my lumber rough cut to length, I milled it flat on one end and then got it all to the same thickness at the planer. Then at the table saw, I cut one thing of maple a little bit wider than three inches, and then I cut all the other strips down to three inches. Uh, this way they would actually um, make a nice brick pattern. And then I cut the walnut down to a quarter inches wide, and those would be the strips that would go in the middle. And then I glued it all up together. Now for one piece of walnut, I was actually cutting up into smaller pieces so I can actually make a wider glue up of walnut. This way I can make some end grain pieces. Now this last piece here kind of kicked out, so I ended up turning off the table saw while it was kicked out here. I didn't want to bring it back and end up with a kickback. Then I measured each piece and ended up cutting uh, all the kind of blemished areas out and I had to do this with every little piece and make sure that I was actually going to be gluing up a nice wide panel wide enough that it would cover the entire cutting board. Then after that glue up dried I smoothed out one side at the joiner so it was nice and flat and then I went to the table saw. Now at the table saw you can see I'm actually using a uh, a little card here to kind of pinch this on my sled and that keeps my fingers away and ends up kind of using it as a little bit of a clamp. This way I don't have to hold this down with my fingers anywhere near the blade. Uh, made it a lot safer for these type of cuts. Uh, because I'm actually cutting these into smaller strips, uh, it just made it a little bit safer for this, this sort of action. So I cut this into three strips this way it allows me to end up flipping these into uh, sides to where I can actually get end grain pieces out of this walnut. Then I cut the rest of the strips for the other glue up as well. And I had to actually end up cutting out a small blemished area in the middle here of the, um, the glue up as well. There was a small imperfection in the cherry there. Now with the walnut flipped up to where it's actually end grain going upward, I cut these into quarter inch strips. This way when I do the glue up, I can actually turn these into a brick pattern. So now I've got the everything turned into a end grain glue up here. So all of the all of the vertical portions here are all end grain, even the walnut pieces in between here. It's all end grain coming upward. And I've got two pine strips on the ends. This way when I send it through the planer here I don't end up with any chip out whatsoever. Now after uh, gluing those pieces on it ended up being a little too long for my table saw sled so I was not able to make this cut on the table saw sled and I'm having to use my miter gauge uh, which it would have been a whole lot easier with the sled. I need to make a longer sled. Now to square up the rest of it and we'll have a nice rectangular cutting board. I put a chamfer on all four corners, this way I had a, a nice, nice chamfered corner. Then I put a very small chamfered edge around the whole cutting board. And that chamfer was probably about uh, right around an eighth of an inch chamfer. And 
Then I did a whole lot of sanding. Uh, I ended up starting with 80 grit, just basically to take out any uh, planar marks or anything like that. And went to 120 grit, and then 220 grit, and then 320 grit. And then I wet the cutting board a little bit, and then went back to 220, and then 320, and then 400. I always recommend branding your work. I bought a, a wood burning brand for all of my work and I burned my logo into just about everything that I make if my logo will fit on it. So on my cutting boards here I'm burning my logo on all four sides on this one. Uh, depending on the cutting board usually I only do two sides but on this one here I just thought it looked good on all four sides so I ended up putting it on there. Then I'll sand off the uh, a little bit of excess burn off and we'll move on from there. And a good soaking of mineral oil. Uh, this board actually doesn't fit into my bin here all that well so I end up having to basically kind of pour the mineral oil on and let it drip over it and I just keep on pouring it on and pouring it on uh, until it kind of stops soaking it in. And I started heating up my mineral oil beeswax mixture uh, this is like a 4 to 1 ratio, uh, so it ends up being pretty soft anyway, but uh, uh, it's a nice mineral oil beeswax mixture that I use, and I, I apply it warm. This way it'll actually penetrate into the wood a little bit more than if you just kind of rubbed it on uh, just hard like that. So by penetrating in there, it actually penetrates in, and pretty much as soon as it hits the wood, it starts to harden anyway. And then as it, as it hardens, I kind of buff it right in, and... I'll just buff it in as hard as I can, and then once it fully hardens, then I'll, I'll take a, another paper towel that is as a dry paper towel, and then buff it in even more. So here it is in its completed state, and with that mineral oil and beeswax mixture, it allows it to be a little bit more water resistant than with just mineral oil by itself. Now, a cutting board with just mineral oil uh, will last a good long while, but you're going to have to reapply that mineral oil on a more regular basis. That beeswax will give it a little bit more of a water barrier, and it'll just give it a little bit more longevity for you having to reapply. Uh, but mineral oil by itself is probably about the cheapest way to maintain, and once this beeswax mineral oil mixture kind of wears away, you can just reapply mineral oil as needed. Or if you do use a mineral oil beeswax mixture, you could just reapply that and it'll just be a less frequent maintenance that you have to do. So I just prefer to do that. Uh, I, it comes out nice and smooth and it, you just a great finish. So I'm, I'm very happy with it. And with the uh, walnut, maple, cherry, I th just think it's a great combination of woods. It just looks awesome in my opinion. So I hope you all enjoyed this build and I have many other things out there. I have a mix of different things that I like to do. So, and I have a bunch of new things that's getting ready to come out. So if you haven't subscribed already, definitely hit that subscribe button and follow along with what I've got to come up ahead. If you haven't seen some of my previous videos, definitely check some of those out as well. So I hope you all enjoyed this build and God bless.